Hi everyone, welcome to A Stitch in Time. Today is Saturday, it's September 7th, 2023, and this is episode 265. I'm Carol, also known as Knits and Pearls on Ravelry, and I live east of Vancouver in the Fraser Valley of British Columbia, Canada, where it is sunny and hot today, and just a little bit smoky. There are still wildfires burning here in BC, next door in Alberta, and south of us in Washington State. And sometimes that smoke makes its way down the valleys to the coast. Um, fortunately, however, it is not as bad as it has been at other times. So just uh, wake up in the morning, can smell it a little bit, and the mountains are kind of hazy. And usually by evening, the sky has cleared up some, somewhat. Um, it's been a while. <laughs> I hope you're all doing well. Um, I just feels like forever since I sat down to record and I think part of that is just the fact that we were away for about a week and that always kind of messes with the time-space continuum. <laughs> Uh, but I have almost three pages of notes, so it's going to be a long one. Uh, grab yourself something to drink and a project to work on and let's settle in and chat for a while. Before I uh, launch into all of the show and tell that I have for you today, I do have a couple of winners to announce for the two make-alongs that are taking place in the Ravelry group. So first up is the August winner for the Another Year of Stash year-long chatter thread. Uh, I drew from posts 1091 to 1201. Random number generator picked post 1187. That is Mystery Sewer, who is Sandy from Ontario, Canada. So congratulations, Sandy. Uh, Sandy is a prolific knitter. Um, the other, or the next winner, the second, the last <laughs> winner is for the July portion of the Yarn of the Month Club. There were 11 finishers. I drew from, uh, our random number generator drew, po or not post, finished project number four. That is Junie also, who is June from Newfoundland, Canada. So we have a couple of Canadian winners today. Both uh, Sandy and June have won up to $20 US in patterns that are giftable on Ravelry. So please uh, contact me via private message on Ravelry and I will get those patterns into your inbox as soon as I can. So uh, thank you to both uh, Sandy and June for participating and congratulations. And thanks to everyone else who has participated thus far. Uh, it is never too late to join in if you are new to the podcast. First of all, welcome. And second of all, uh, yeah, come by the A Stitch in Time podcast Ravelry group um, and uh, hopefully you will join in the fun. <clears throat> Pardon me, fun. <laughs> all right, maybe I need a little sip, clear the frogs out of my throat. And let's get going with finished projects. You would think after this much time I would have more than one, but I do not. I only have one. Um, it is a pair of socks. These are the Paper Wings Socks by Helen Stewart of Curious Handmade. And this pattern is, I believe, the fourth installment in this year's Handmade Sock Society. So currently it is just available as part of the um, six pattern collection, but Helen Stewart always makes her patterns uh, available individually once the um, collection has finished. So um, I knit these socks from uh, some Lily and Pine Day Lily sock uh, in the Sandy's Beach colorway. And I chose this color to represent the cabbage whites that frequent um, our garden and yards. We see them all the time. 
I also thought the light color would show off the uh, butterfly motif really well. So speaking of which, why don't I uh, bring these in a little bit closer so you can see. So I knit these, they're um, the medium size, which I think was a 64 stitch. Uh, I used a two millimeter needle. And there you can see that pattern really well. I did an extra pattern repeat on the leg because I like to have a longer leg on my socks. It has an eye of partridge heel and then just a plain stockinette uh, foot. And I'm not sure what toe Helen Stewart uses. I just go ahead and used my uh, favorite wedge toe because it fits me really well. So um, these were a pleasure to knit. It was uh, fun doing this little motif. It, I found the legs went really quickly. And then once that was done, it was nice to just have a plain stockinette foot to kind of uh, knit when I, when I could, um, you know, when I needed something kind of mindless. So just the perfect blend of, uh, of uh, interest and simplicity, which is how I always think of Helen Stewart's patterns. It's a, it's a nice mix of a, usually a simple stitch pattern, but effective and a little bit of interest without being, um, taking too much brain power and, um, yeah, <laughs> and now I'm babbling because I don't know what I'm trying to say. Anyway, done with these socks very happy with them. I'll talk a little bit more about the uh, next pattern in this collection because it came out, I think it was on Thursday. All right, I have lots and lots of works in progress and I debated whether I would show them all to you because some I haven't made as much progress as others, but I thought, oh, what the heck, I've got them all here. Um, I'm just going to go for it. So um, first up is my, I'm just looking at bags. I have a lot of project bags next to me. I'm gonna be doing a lot of leaning, uh, leaning down and leaning across here. First up is um, what I'm calling my Bering Sea Socks because they are knit from this skein of Artfeel Bell, which is a, 8020 Superwash Merino Nylon Blend, and this is the Bering Sea colorway. This was, I've lost track of which number, I think this is number six in my personal sock yarn club. It might be number seven. Um, and along with this skein, I had bought what they call a tiny bell, and that's in the Cape Verde colorway. So I thought those went together really nicely. So I believe last time we spoke, um, I was, I don't even know if I'd gotten, I'm gonna turn this around just cause I got a stitch marker here indicating the end of the gusset. I don't even know if I had done the heel at that point. I'm lost track. Uh, but here you can see I have one sock completely finished. It's my usual top down, two by two rib, uh, two millimeter needle. I did a traditional heel flap gusset. And again, my usual rounded toe. And as you can see, I use the coordinating skein for the heel and toe. I'm gonna bring that in closer so you can see that really nice colorway. I love how it knit up. And oh my goodness, I love this color. <gasps> In real life, it's got a little bit of a sheen, probably from the nylon. And I would just think a sweater in this would be absolutely stunning. So I may have been looking at the Art Feel website. As of yet, I have not pressed uh, buy, but I'm not ruling that out. I really, sh oops, jiggled the camera, sorry. I really should not, um, you'll see why in a while, uh, but never say never. Anyway, I got um, those, fin that one finished, and I am now on the, oh no, I finished the gusset on 
Yes, I finished the gusset on this second sock. Uh, I have a little row counter on it so I can uh, count the rows to where I need to uh, join in the complementary yarn and start the toe. So I have just begun that process. I think I'm what, five or six rows in, yeah, five, and I think I need 32 if I remember correctly. So anyway, um, loving how these are turning out. So maybe I will do all of my personal sock yarn club socks all to, um, all in a row um, because I have three of them on the go for various reasons. So I believe that the uh, yarn I had chosen before that one I just showed you was um, this one. This is Sweet Fiber Super Sweet Sock in the um, apple picking colorway. It's a beautiful shade of red. It's showing up actually pretty well today. It doesn't always. Uh, this is also an 8020 Superwash Merino Nylon and this was from the Fall 2022 Sock Club. Did I say it was called apple picking? I think I did. Um, so I decided to knit a fall themed sock from this yarn. I'm actually been keeping it in this project bag that I made for myself. I think I was in, did I start these in July or around about then? And so I thought that would be a good, good bag for uh, the summer for Canada Day. Anyway, I have finished one sock. I think I had this finished last time I recorded. And this is the, these are the Caribou Fall socks. Um, it's a pattern that I um, put out myself and I had, had made a few, uh, I think a couple of sample pairs, but never one just to have to wear. And um, this is the smaller size. I think it's a 60 stitch pattern if I remember correctly. Um, my pattern gives you an option for a garter stitch or a ribbed cuff. This one obviously I did the ribbing. Uh, heel, traditional heel flap and gus gusset rounded toe. So uh, just a really neat kind of garter and lace stitch pattern. It has a lot of movement in it, a lot of texture. I really love this stitch pattern. Um, and I think last time I showed you, I think I had just cast on the second sock and I haven't done a whole lot more since then but I did um, finish the cuff and do a pattern repeat so these are you know kind of on their way but I haven't been working on them very much um, because I've had lots of other patterns uh, lots of other projects I should say um, that have been competing for my interest so um, I was working on uh, this sock in the car on the way up to our cabin and I knew that I would possibly get to the point where I needed to do the toe on the way and I didn't want to fuss with that in the car. And so I went ahead and drew what I think was bag number eight from my personal sock yarn club. These are just uh, 12 skeins that I had my husband put into paper bags at the beginning of the year. When I'm ready for a new, um, especially a new stockinette sock, I just pull from there. So what I pulled out was this skein, which is also from Sweet Fiber. Uh, this is from the Holiday 2022 collection, and this is Candlelight Glow. So it's the same base as the Apple Picking, the 8020 Superwash Merino Nylon, um, the Super Sweet Sock Base. So I, just from the way the skein was wound, I thought this would kind of work up in a micro stripe, and I was correct. So I went ahead, before we left home, I had the, I think I had the cuff and a couple rows of the sock ready to go. And so I did work on it a little bit in the car on the way to the cabin and on the way from the cabin. 
um, but you can see I only have a couple of inches of leg done there but I like the way it's knitting up kind of interesting a nice goldy color it's pretty and then excuse me I'm gonna cough so I'll be right back I can feel the tickle in my throat that's better I don't know if it's the smoke in the air or if it's all the talking or just what but I could definitely feel that one coming <laughs> anyway I uh, took a look through my sock yarn leftovers and I found just this little bit of um, yarn from the woolen rabbit it is I wrote it down in here um, it's their harmony sock in the Tupelo honey colorway and I just thought that went together really well I have seven grams which I think should be enough for uh, short row heels and so my intention is to do the heels in this yarn so I don't disrupt the uh, way the yarn is knitting up if this doesn't prove to be enough then what I'll probably do is take yarn from the other end of the ball and do a short row heel uh, again, just so that I don't disrupt the way the yarn is knitting up because I like the kind of stripey nature of it. And if I do a traditional heel flap and gusset, it will probably kind of mess with that. So these will see more attention once my Bering Sea socks are all done. I put them in this kind of um, wintry bag and it's got like gold balls and things on it because I just thought it's a winter colorway, holiday colorway, and I just thought it would um, put, put it in a, an appropriate bag. Okay, let's see here. What else do I have to show you? Oh, I have my Killer Queen Pullover by Mariana Rella of Lyrical Knits. Come in, lean down to get it. I've got it in my Buckingham Palace bag that my sister brought back for me um, as a souvenir. So this is what the pattern looks like. And although it wasn't intentional, I'm kind of doing it in a similar color palette. So I am using um, two types of Cascade 220 Superwash. So this uh, one is color uh, 880, which is Marion Berry. Love this shade of purple. It's a little bit different on, well, it's pretty close right there actually, what I can see on the screen. Sometimes again, it doesn't show up quite right. And then this I am uh, using as the contrast. It is this Cascade Superwash 220 uh, or 220 Superwash Effects yarn. This is color 10, which is Lightning Storm. So I had purchased this one. This one I had in my stash and they go together very well. And I put a few more inches on it since I showed it to you last. So I'm gonna put my bag off my lap and <clears throat> hold this up for you. So this is the front. So I think last time I was part way through this bubble section and I've since done these rows and I've started another section of, I think these are called champagne flutes. These are tiny bubbles bigger bubbles and champagne flutes. So um, I believe that once the next section of champagne flutes is done, I think you do more tiny bubbles and then it's time for the ribbing. Yes, I can see that on the photo here. Um, I will make a determination once I get that far. I may have to do either a few more rows of stockinette in the in the main color or else maybe some more rows of ribbing if I decide that I want the sweater just a little bit longer but I'll try it on when I get to that point and see but I do love how this is coming out um, I did not take this project with me when I went away so it's been um, over a week since I've worked on it but I am looking forward to getting back to it 
So again, I'm gonna lean down. I'm trying to kind of clean things up as I go so it's not too much of a mess after I record. Um, I'm sure any of you who, who do have podcasts know what a disaster area you're recording a spot can look like after you've shown everything. Okay, what's next? Oh yes, so my September Yarn of the Month Club project. So it is in this bag that I made for myself. This, um, I'm doing the Juniper and Cedar, which is a shawl by Heather Scott of Aberdeen's Wool Company. And, <clears throat> pardon me, I'll show you what the shawl looks like. I was inspired to uh, purchase this kit. There you go. It's just a little uh, triangular shawl. And you can put the minis in any order that you like. So I was inspired to knit this by uh, someone in the Ravelry group. I think it was a year or two ago uh, had made one. And so I got a set for myself. So it's five minis. And they came in, uh, they call it a pickle jar. It came in a quart size canning jar. So it was a really neat presentation. So I don't know if you can see, but five different colors there. And uh, this pattern was originally part of their, um, an advent set, I think it was 2018. And then they've since prepared these kits for purchase. I don't know if they still have them on their website, but they did when I looked into it a while ago. So I kind of looked at the different projects and decided on a little bit different order than the um, yarns were put in in the photo. So I started with this kind of uh, natural and gray, silvery gray color. And you do this um, eyelet lace pattern. And then you do a transition. And what I think is really interesting when you do the transitions with this garter stitch, Rather than having you do the transitions on the right side row, you begin with the wrong side row. So you get that kind of broken up look to your stitches as opposed to a clean line like that, which I really like. It really makes them kind of fade into each other more. So then the next section was this kind of feather and fan. And I've just finished the transition into the next section. I'm using this kind of a beige toned yarn. Um, this is going to be um, a mesh section. And then um, I'm going to transition into this variegated green, which I think is another feather and fan section. And then the border will be this lighter green. So this has been really fun to work on. I started this um, September 1st up at, I think it was September 1st, up at the cabin. And then <clears throat> I'm pretty sure it was on September 1st. And then I worked on it on um, Thursday while I was killing some time waiting for my husband to get off work so I'll talk about that a little bit more in a minute but um so two sections down three to go <clears throat> pardon me and I feel a little little sniffly too after that um coughing fit so I think I'm actually just gonna grab a Kleenex and I'll be right back with my next work in progress so my final knitting work in progress is the um, Secret Forest, I had to look at my notes, Secret Forest Mystery Knit Along by Lisa K. Ross of Paper Daisy Creations. So um, spoiler alert, I'm about to show you the yarn I'm using and almost all of clue one. So if you don't want to be spoiled, um, I will put a timestamp that you can skip ahead to. So ready, set, I'm gonna show it to you. 
So I am using, you used uh, one main color and then uh, seven mini skeins or smaller skeins. And so um, I ordered the Midnight Walk kit from Sweet Georgia Yarns. And then I, to go with it, I got uh, two skeins of the Tough Love Sock in Cauldron. And uh, the mini skeins are also Tough Love Sock. I believe that that is also an 80-20 Superwash Merino Nylon Blend. Just gonna see if I can easily find my label here for that. <laughs> Obviously not easily. Okay, I'm not gonna waste any more time looking. I am keeping it in this bag that I would made for myself. And I thought the colors really matched the colors of the mini skeins really well. So I'm going to put up a photo here of the, all the yarns laid out together because now I've got them all in little individual um, Ziploc bags to keep them sorted. And so that's too hard to show you. So here is what I've done so far. This shawl, I believe she's told us is going to be a wrap. And it's in a very interesting shape. So here's the first part. I love, I should, oh no, my pattern's out in the um, living room, but uh, she always has really interesting names for the sections. So I think this one was something like Into the Woods, and then there's Raindrops or Dewdrops, Dewdrops, I think. And now we're working on twigs. So I'm gonna come a little bit closer. So as you can see, you introduce contrasting color one here. And I got all the way to the end of this lace section and realized I had done garter stitch here instead. And I had to really think about whether I was just gonna call it a design element and carry on that I thought it's so close to the beginning of the shawl, like I should do it how it's supposed to be. So I ripped out all the lace and uh, redid it. But uh, there's the first color. And then you do a similar section with your second contrasting color. And then this is a kind of a rib and garter pattern there. I think that shows pretty well in the light. It almost looks like cables, but it's actually a garter stitch that breaks up these columns of knit stitches, or uh, purl bumps, I should say. It's purl bumps that break up that column. So this is called twigs. And then I'm going to be finishing off clue two by doing another section like this with contrasting color three, which is, let's see how easy it is to find it. Um, <clears throat> I think it's this one. Yes. So that will be the color of the third stripe. So it's very interesting to see so much of the main color being used to start. And I think I've started to say something about it being a little bit of an interesting shape. Uh, so what we're doing is we cast on here. This edge is just being knit straight, but this edge we are gradually increasing and it's becoming um, slanted. And so the sh shape so far is like this straight and that edge going like this. <laughs> I'm showing that really well, aren't I? So yeah, kind of intriguing. I'm anticipating that we may carry on with this main color and stripes of the contrast before then maybe maybe uh, switching to the opposite as you work your way along. That's my guess, I have no idea. But I just, I love her um, mystery patterns. They're just so entertaining and the sections are just long enough for you to enjoy the stitch pattern. But then you get to um, kind of um, break things up with color changes or stitch pattern changes. So enjoying that thoroughly. 
So that's the end of the um, Mystery Cal spoiler. So if you've just been turning away or closing your eyes, you can look now. So that is it ready. for all of the knitting uh, projects that I have, but I also have uh, my cross stitch to share with you again. I, for some reason, thought I had not done very much on it since the last episode, but when I went back and watched that portion, I realized I had done a ton more. So I am doing the Autumn Bell Pull from Stony Creek from August of 2006, and I bought um, the supplies and began it somewhere around then, 2006 or 2007. So it's been on the go for quite a while and I was quite determined that I was going to finish it in time for this fall. And it looks like I will achieve that goal. So I think the last time I showed it to, I believe I had finished the M square, except for the lettering. And so I went ahead and did that. And since then, I have done a lot on the N. So I have completed, obviously, the whole letter, all of the maple leaves, and I've got the little caps done for the acorns here, and a lot of the um, colors in the oak leaves. So I just have to finish those acorns and oak leaves. There's a little bit of back stitch to do on those and then just the lettering and then this will be ready to put together so um i'm going to buy some um either some muslin or some sort of uh, this taupey beige colored uh, broadcloth something like that to um to line it you do a backing for it and then i will be hanging it up on this uh, decorative hanger. So I am so excited about that. So if you've been watching for a while, you know that um, I had bought all the, um, this was part of a series for all four of the seasons, and I had bought all of the supplies to do all four seasons. So in anticipation of uh, finishing that one, um, one day before we went away, I sort of dug out everything I had and put them all together. And um, so um, that's the summer one. So I have, um, you know, there's, let's see, pull it out of here. <clears throat> Pardon me. Here's the hanger for the summer one and there, this one has yellow threads has whoops <laughs> is trying to slide off my lap um, has some red beads has these cute little ladybug mo uh, little charms I don't know if that's what you call them but buttons or whatever um, so I think I'm gonna start summer next I don't know if I'll get it finished by next summer, but I figure if I did a square a month, then I, then I could. So that's my sort of plan. Knowing full well that I may run out of steam and who knows, it might be another, you know, 20 years or something before I work on it. Um, so this is gonna be done on white and cloth. So in pulling everything out and sorting everything, um, I realized that uh, at the time when I had bought all this, um, apparently I was unable to get fabrics, the same fabrics that were called for for the um, winter and spring bell poles. And so I had bought something to substitute. And um, the spring one is supposed to have these purple, this fabric with these purple dividing lines. And um, apparently I must have decided that I was going to create those lines myself by embroidering them on. In any case, I went online and I started looking to see if I could get the fabrics 
the proper fabrics for the spring and the winter bell poles. I did find this spring fabric. Apparently it's very rare and the problem was is I couldn't get a piece the size I needed without buying way more than I needed and paying a ridiculous price. So then I did find that I could order um, a strip of the white and cloth like I'm going to use for the summer and so I'll just be doing it on white. It won't have the purple. Um, this one has this um, here for it. So it'll be really pretty too. And then that brings me to winter. And again, I realized I didn't have the proper cloth for the winter, but I was able to get a piece of it specifically for the bell pole. And if you can tell, it's done on an off-white with some cream dividing lines. Um, and what was interesting about it is, is all three of those have these beautiful decorative hangers. Uh, this one, just had this this and then you have a little um, tassel that you put at the bottom and this one's really pretty because it has some fun has beads and it also has these little fun things like a little house a little carrot for the nose of the snowman and a little heart um, and then it has also like iridescent thread. So winter is going to be like super fun. Um, anyway, what I found as I was on this website ordering the fabrics I needed for those two is that uh, since then, the same uh, company that put out like these bell pole holders had put out a similar one, but it was a beautiful red cardinal. And so I went ahead and ordered that too. So instead of having this kind of boring um, bell pull holder, I'm gonna have a nice, beautiful cardinal in a similar style as the others. So obviously with three more seasons to go, it's gonna be a while till I get all four seasons done. But I, like I said, I think I decided to do the summer next because I have a real possibility of having that ready for next summer. And I do have a Christmas, but it's really more winter themed bell pull that my mom had made me. So I could put that one up in winter and then I'll just have to work on spring for <laughs> the spring and the, and the um, winter one for the future. But those are my plans. Um, also for up and coming as far as knitting goes, um, as I mentioned, the fifth sock pattern for the Helen Stewart Handmade Sock Society uh, was released, I think it was on Thursday, and they are called the Mermaid Shell Socks. I'll put a picture up here of what they look like. As you can see, it's got a pretty lace pattern in the front, and then the rest is more or less stockinette. So I've been scoping out some yarns from my stash that I might use. So there are uh, these two from Lily and Pine. They're both the Daylily sock. This is Earl Grey. This is the one I was first thinking about, but I just did a, you know, off-white sock, so I'm kind of leaning towards a different color. Uh, this one is London Fog. So I think either of these would show off the pattern really well. I'm also thinking about this one from Ancient Arts. It's their sock NATO in the, the Bee's Knees colorway. I thought that might look kind of fun too. And then they also have this one I got as part of a uh, box from Knit City. Um, this is from Dragon Strings, and this is the Cloud City colorway. So, I haven't entirely decided yet, but those are some of the yarns that I'm considering for that project. So, by the next time I record, I should have it cast on and be well on its well on a, well on my way. 
All right. <clears throat> the next segment is acquisitions. And I'm actually feeling a little embarrassed by this section because there are many acquisitions. Um, you know, on one hand, I'm trying to knit from stash and, you know, been pretty faithful with my personal sock yarn club and yarn of the month club yarns. On the other hand, it's so hard to resist. Um, one, I have absolutely, well, I don't have any guilt or regret over any of these. They're all beautiful. There's just a part of me that's like, did you really need to do this? This particular one, yes, I absolutely had to do. Fiber Nymph Dye Works introduced a new yarn club um, a few months ago. Never know how to say it. It's the Lepidoptera Yarn and Fiber Club. And um, that the colorways are based on butterflies and moths. So this is the August shipment. Um, the butterfly that was um, featured was uh, the Swallowtail. And as she explained, where she lives back in Pennsylvania, they have the Eastern Black and the Eastern Tigers Swallowtails. You can see photos of them there. And what's interesting is they have the same colors, it's just they're kind of reversed. And before I show you the yarn, like this gorgeous tissue paper is what they were wrapped what the yarn was wrapped in. Beautiful touch. And then we also received, if you um, signed up early, I think from the newsletter, I think that's what it was. Yeah, newsletter early access gift. Um, you received these um, stitch markers. So I'm just trying to get this so you can see it really well. <laughs> Not doing a very good job. These stitch markers and then this beautiful butterfly progress keeper. There's the stitch markers. All right. You want to see the yarn don't you i just gasped when i opened up the package it is so pretty look how awesome that is so as you can see there's a um, main skein of self-striping and two mini skeins so this is the swallowtails colorway this is accent orange and this is larva green because as you can see the larva is equally stunning look at that so um i cannot wait to delve into that um however this is probably going to get put aside for next year's personal sock yarn club We'll see. I've just kind of swamped with it, with all the projects I have going. But what I might do is wind this off, like wind it up and use these colors and do um, a square or two for my um, blanket, my Fiber Nymph Dye Works blanket that I started using last year's Advent yarns. So that's a way for me to get a taste of the yarn without you know, delving into a whole pair of socks right away. Cause I just, I'm feeling a little bit overwhelmed because I'm behind on my personal sock yarn club this year by a month. And so never say never, but that's sort of what I think is gonna happen. Especially because I do wanna do a little bit of uh, gift knitting. Um, I could say that's where all of these next yarns come in, but that would, be a lie. <laughs> One for sure is for gift knitting. The rest are just because I fell in love with them. So one website that I've been eyeing for a while is um, Rose Hill Yarns. I think that they were at Knit City Vancouver the last time I went a couple of years ago. Um, 
pretty sure my daughter bought some yarn from her. But if you go on her website, she has the most beautiful photographs and has uh, colorways dyed inspired by those photographs. And she does different themes. Um, so she had one was like a, uh, like a, I want to say like a snow melt theme. So it had like big thing colorways based on water and I think glaciers and lakes or I can't remember exactly. She she just does different themes and she'll do a whole set of mini of full skeins and minis based on um, these colors and they always go together in a set. One was like um like with ice cream or sweets because she had like think like the cherry on top and the I don't know I, I'm I can't remember anyway um this latest one she has going has to do with um I think botanicals I'm not even positive about this I just know that I saw this yarn and I just knew I wanted it. This is part of a yarn club too. She does a monthly yarn club. Um, so this was, I think, August or July's. I don't remember. Sorry, very vague. Uh, you can go and look on her website and it'll, you'll see it all. Anyway, this one is a um, 463 yards of a full skein um, of 75% uh, superwash merino, 25% nylon, and then a 20 gram mini, 92 yards. Um, and this is the magical botanical colorway. So I think there are others that are different flower themes, if I'm remembering correctly. And then they all kind of go together, I think. Anyway, there's that one. This one I've had my eye on for a long time and it was getting down to there wasn't much left. And um, I think I looked at it on Ravelry and someone had made some socks and that really sold it to me because they were beautiful. So this is the Chickadee Trail colorway. And again, there's her label. So these, this is just going to be a pair of plain stockinette socks. It's beautiful. And then um, this one, equally stunning, is, um, yeah, there's a label that doesn't have, maybe it's the yarn clubs have the shiny labels. Not sure. Anyway, this one is called Barn Owl. And then there was this gorgeous picture of a barn owl. And this one is also part of a fade set, I believe. Anyway, I love um, brown and blue together. So again, probably just plain stocking at socks, but those came while I was away. Um, yeah, I'm running out of places to put things. And then, darn Kathy. <laughs> yes, I'm looking at you again. So I had commented about her sort of reminding me about polka dot creek um, on my last episode and that i had ordered um, this canada day fade set for a sweater and then in the episode comments she mentioned that they have a podcast which i did not realize and that they were going to be she said something about just check out their latest one the yarns are really great or something while well, they were, it's all their fall yarns and Halloween yarns. And darned if I didn't order four sock sets. And here's my reasoning. The sock sets come with two minis, they're 100 grams. And so my way of thinking is I can get two pairs of socks out of one set. So it's very economical to buy it like a set instead of as just a plain skein of yarn. Anyway, they're gorgeous. This is Sweater Weather. And they, um, this is 
spice. No, this is spice. This is spruce. Gorgeous. Uh, this one I just love too. This is pumpkin patch. Again, just look at those beautiful fall colors. Uh, this is spice again, and this is moss. And then this is birch. Uh, this one is chocolate and this one is spruce. So that'll actually come in handy because I have a couple of spruces so that between the two that might help my um, yarn go a little bit further. And then finally, in this one, I am going to knit some socks for my son's girlfriend out of it. This is Sunflower. And uh, my son has a couple of little garden plots um, at his condo. It's like a kind of a community garden area. And she planted sunflowers in it. So um, I thought that would be fun. So then it comes with um, duckling and chocolate. So I actually have two, um, two of the spice, two spice minis, and two spruce minis. So, like I say, that should help the yarn go a little further. And what I'm gonna do is uh, we're up at the cabin with uh, our son and his girlfriend, and I kind of let it be known. Uh, that when I, when if anyone had a chance, well, she had her uh, socks off or shoes off to try and see what size shoe she wore. So she's a seven and a half. So it's a bit bigger than I am. So what I think I'm going to do is do toe up socks and then uh, make them kind of divide this yarn into um, half and then knit. Uh, and then half again, knit two socks, toe up, and use as much yarn as I can and use these for like heels, definitely toes and heels, maybe even a cuff if I have enough. And then I'll know I have enough left over for a pair of socks, another pair of socks, which I'll probably knit the same way. In fact, probably all of these, I'll just knit from the toe up and then I can make sure I have enough for two pairs out of each one. So yeah, that's how I kind of justified some of those. <sighs> it's so hard, there's so much temptation. Um, so many gorgeous yarns. Speaking of temptation, so I said I was not going to do the Stephen West mystery shawl this year. But then I learned it had a gradient theme. It takes four skeins of, of colors that make a gradient. And then of course I've seen different sets on different websites. Um, I haven't even looked at my own yarn yet. I don't even know if I'm gonna do it, but I am so tempted. So part of me is, but oh, it takes, it takes so much of a commitment of time and it means I'm gonna neglect a lot of these other projects that I have going that I really like. On the other hand, it's such a unique and fun experience. So while I'm still leaning towards not doing it, there is a part of me that might do it. Last year we were away I think during part of that time. So I really fell behind. This year, I'm just gonna be home. And so, I don't know, I guess don't be surprised if I end up participating. <laughs> but right now, that's not in the plans. Yeah, we'll see. All right, that is it for all the crafty stuff on to life things. So as I mentioned, uh, we were away for about a week. Um, we had planned to go up to the cabin last Friday, which was the Friday before Labor Day weekend. Uh, Monday uh, was the holiday. 
Um, then we found out that our son and his girlfriend were going to go up Thursday night, as were her parents. And so we thought, well, Cameron had already planned to take the Friday off. We were just going to go in the morning. So we decided that we would go up Thursday night also. Um, and so the there's been there had been uh, a wildfire through the uh, Fraser Canyon, which is the way we usually go. And even though the highway was open, there was warnings that there might be some delays. So we went a different route, um, which actually took not much more time and it was just kind of nice for a change. Um, and then um, my next oldest sister and her husband were there also, um, as, as was my uh, mom. And uh, my sister and her husband decided to stay a couple extra days to kind of overlap with us, which was really fun because we haven't been up there with them for a while. Plus, we've hardly seen them. Uh, this is the sister I used to curl with and my husband used to curl with her husband. And um, yeah, we just, since we're not curling together anymore, like we just hardly ever see each other. So it was great to have them there for a few days. Unfortunately, uh, my son's girlfriend's parents were not able to come after all. Her mom had had appendicitis the week before and had her appendix out. She was still planning to come, but they decided to delay it a day just to give her another day to rest. But then they phoned and she um, was in some pain and wasn't doing well, and the initial Thought was that she had an abscess in her incision but what it actually turned out to be is that she had kidney stones and um, was not able to be uh, operated they were too large to pass so they they were gonna have to do surgery and it was supposed to happen last week but I just talked to her uh, this morning not her mom but my son's girlfriend and uh, she actually had her surgery this morning so she's doing well but that was sort of an extra week of of pain to go through so unfortunately we did not uh, get to spend the weekend with them and get the, to know them better but I'm glad to know that uh, that her mom's okay now but terrible time um so we're kind of the last group up there for the season. Um, and so Cameron and I and uh, our son and his girlfriend and my mom, we all kind of closed up camp for the year. And so um, that meant like draining the water from the two cabins that our family uses and doing final cleanup and then uh, disconnecting the main holding tank from the input that comes from the spring and cleaning all that out and stuff so it actually went pretty smoothly and uh, we uh, we sent our son and his girlfriend home a little bit earlier we were not coming home and uh, so we had more time and so we once the bulk of things were done we're like hey go go ahead and go on your way and then um, we stuck around, finished the finished the jobs, um, but we, after dropping um, my mom off at her place in town and and you know all of that, it was about noon when we left, so that wasn't bad at all. So uh, we were heading to the town where my husband has been working off and on. Uh, since April uh, because of staff shortages and because of his uh, manager having holidays. So that's what the case was this week is this week and next week his the manager there is on holidays. And so I just decided rather than have my husband come all the way home, turn around, have to go all the way back the next morning that I would just uh, just uh, tail along uh, that's not the right word, is it? Tag along. That's the word I'm looking for. I would just tag along and spend the the next three days there with him. Um, 
it's a little bit of a holiday for me. Uh, it's a little more interesting for him to not just come back to an empty hotel room. Um, meant he would be working less because he tends to work more when he's on his own and there's not much to do. Um, so we drove over there and we took um, a secondary highway that uh, had been washed out during the uh, floods um, almost two years ago, November of 2021. Uh, BC had, we had three atmospheric rivers in a row. There was uh, huge flooding here in the Fraser Valley and all of our main highways suffered damage. And so we're basically cut off from <laughs> the rest of BC for a while. Uh, and those repairs are ongoing. So uh, this particular section of highway had suffered significant damage. Parts of the road were just completely washed away and the highway was closed for, I think over a year. I'm not even sure when it opened, um, but it's a little, it's a route that we've always enjoyed driving. And so we decided to, to take it um, on the Monday and it's quite windy, you go along by the river and it was interesting. There was a lot of, um, Places it was just gravel and you could see places like you could see how high the river had to have been to have washed out certain sections um, but we enjoyed the route we had just the best wildlife viewing that day and it was a gorgeous sunny day we it had been smoky um, at the cabins on it was really nice on Friday and Saturday and then we woke up to smoke on Sunday and it was still smoky Monday um and once we turned onto this highway we lost all the smoke it was a beautiful blue sky sunny it was gorgeous we stopped along the way had a bit of a picnic lunch um so we saw um some eagles some ospreys there are they in a number of areas they've put up platforms for nests and so we saw some ospreys on their nests um, we saw some wild horses. Um, in one place, we saw a deer walking across the river. Because the river is very shallow right now. Um, and then in about three or four different places, we saw some uh, Rocky Mountain bighorn sheep. About 50 in all, I think we figured out. Um, I was trying to take some footage. Turned out... I wasn't taking footage, I was just taking some pictures, but I do have some pictures I'm going to include at the end, and I did get a little bit of footage of the sheep. Um, they, uh, they were just, um, I don't know what you call the females, because the rams are the ones with the big curly horns there were no no males among them they were just moms and babies basically uh, so i do have some photos and some footage of of the moms and babies um so then we were three nights uh in this little town it's called princeton and um one night we were coming back from dinner and there's this little house that's kind of was jacked up they've obviously are are maybe it suffered damage in that same flood because princeton was flooded pretty badly during that same episode um, a couple of years ago anyway this house was kind of up on blocks the yards all dug up and there's this little fence around the whole yard we heard this noise there were two male deer i guess those are bucks um going at each other with their antlers and they didn't seem really serious we thought it was almost like they were practicing but I, I don't and we could hear the click 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 so I got a little bit of footage of that that I'll put in um and then the next night we we're coming back from dinner at a different restaurant and we saw like a uh, mother deer a doe and her fawn like cross the street they're it's very common to see deer in town there. My husband sees them all the time, but it's still kind of cool to see. Uh, the first 
uh, day when we got there, we checked into our hotel and then we went for a walk before dinner. And there's a portion of the uh, Trans Canada Trail that goes through Princeton. And so we were at sort of the eastern section of it and it's along the old um, Kettle Valley Railway route. So there is an old tunnel that you go through and then a old railway bridge. So, um, I had walked it when I was up there a couple of years ago when Cameron was working, and this was before the floods. And so uh, this is the picture of the bridge that I took then. So we came through the tunnel and this is what the bridge looked like now. Um, I guess it also got partially washed away in these floods and hasn't been repaired. So that was an abrupt end to the uh, walk. <laughs> um, and then um, the last day, so Thursday, I checked out of the hotel at about 10.30, quarter to 11. And then I had till uh, about just after six, I had to kill time because Cameron was working and so I ended up taking that tr same trail but going sort of uh, north and east of town. I had done that the last time I was there too um, and it was um, you walk along the river for a little bit and then um, you kind of parallel the highway that's leading out of town. Um, it was again it was such a beautiful day and uh, heard lots of different birds. I had my little Merlin bird app on and heard some birds I had never heard before. But what I really heard a lot and saw a lot were ravens. And so at one point, I'm walking along the trail and there was one that was, it was high up in a tree because the trail is on a, just bordering a slope. But by being high up in a tree, it was basically parallel or same height as the trail was. Anyway, I've got this um, some footage of the raven in the tree that I'll also put at the end. I'll just do a little mishmash of all my footage. Uh, so that was really neat to see one up close and they make so many different sounds, it's crazy. So then once I caught back from my walk, um, it leads into a little park, which is just about a block uh, away from where my husband uh, work was working so I went back to the car I got my knitting went back and sat in the park along the river and knit there for a while uh, at one point um, a woman and her uh, adult daughter uh, came and had a had their lunch there and turned out they especially the mom were um, knitters and so they were talking to me about my knitting and and stuff so that was kind of neat and then I um, went back to the car, put my knitting away, grabbed my book, walked up to a, this cafe, I went and had lunch, sat there for a while and read. And then I came back, grabbed my knitting again, went back to the park. And then it was just getting to be kind of late afternoon and I was on my own. And then I, some people would drive in and drive out and I was just feeling a little more vulnerable being up there on my own. and or out there all on my own. So then I um, went back and just sat in the car for a bit and knit. That's when I worked on my um, Yarn of the Month Club project, that shawl with the mini skeins. Um, and then finally it was, uh, my husband was done work. So we just grabbed something to eat before we headed out of town. And we got home about quarter to nine that night. So the first thing we did was put a load of laundry in because my husband was leaving early the next morning for a three day golf weekend. And so um, he basically unpacked, <laughs> repacked and got picked up, uh, I think about 7.15 or something the next morning. Um, so he was driving up with uh, my brother-in-law, my cousin, and a good friend of ours. So at least he did, and, and going right back, it was gonna go right past, right through Princeton again, same route we took home, and then beyond there. 
And then he's coming home Sunday, be late afternoon, early evening when he gets home. And then the same thing's going to happen. Unpack, repack, and then he has to head up again for uh, to work there Monday through Friday. So in all, he'll probably be home less than 24 hours between the two stops. Um, that means he'll have been home about 24 hours in two weeks. So it's just been kind of crazy for him. But at least he's having fun this weekend. Um, except that he's done something to his elbow and, and he was saying it was really sore from golfing. But I'm sure it's not going to stop him golfing because heaven forbid. Okay, that sounded really sarcastic. It's just that it's sore so he doesn't really ever let himself heal he just keeps going like nothing's wrong that's just how he is so whether it be work or play so that's kind of why i said that um let me just look at my notes uh i think that I covered everything um yeah so i'll be on my own i'm on my own this weekend and then i'll be on my own uh next week uh, but that's okay that gives me always uh always feel like a little less guilty if i'm doing knitting or something when i should be doing something else um and i don't have to cook dinners things like that it's a little bit of a holiday for me um Having said that, I am going to be prepping some meals for him this weekend that he, I'll freeze and then he can take them up. He gets really tired of eating at restaurants every meal, um, which I totally get. Uh, so this time he's going to have a kitchenette. So he'll be able to have breakfast in his room, pack a lunch, and then uh, warm up some things for dinner. So he always prefers that to eating out all the time. Um, okay been a really long episode we're almost done I just have to finish with something good and I have two somethings good so what I neglected to mention is a lot of my projects that I am doing I am uh, doing as part of Fiber Nymph Dye Works um, Soy Mel, which is the Stop Shooting on Yourself Make Along that's taking place in her Ravelry group and on Instagram, I think. And on she has a blog too on her website that I think you can participate in if you're not able to use Ravelry. Uh, anyway, I uh, was watching her latest episode yesterday morning and heard my name announced as a uh, uh, one of the winners. So that was really cool. So um, the prize is a skein of yarn, um, her serendipity stripes. So I don't know what it's going to look like, but that's a very exciting thing to win. Um, and then my other something good, actually, I think Mystery Sewer, who won a prize uh, earlier in this episode, I think she was also announced as a winner. So that's kind of cool. My other something good. So um, I know I mentioned a few weeks ago that I had gotten um, new glasses and that with them I was better able to see in good light to do cross stitch and not have to use any sort of magnification. Um, I meant to pull this out earlier. I, here hang on a second. I had bought one of these contraptions a while ago. I was watching a Craft House Magic podcast and she had shown this and I thought, oh, that'd be, that's what I need for cross stitching. And so you have this, you can wear it over your glasses. It has these different, or, or on its own, it has all these different lenses that you then um, clip into here. And so when you have them on, this part magnifies your work. It also has the ability to have a light, which I have never, never used. I don't have batteries in here. Anyway, besides this thing looking kind of ridiculous, 
Um, I also found it really heavy. I would mostly use it when I had my glasses on and it would push my glasses in. I'd end up with these really deep divots here. Um, I would could I could also use it if I had my contacts in and then use it, but then these little nose things are not very comfortable. And then again, it would just kind of hurt here. So um, I had bought those. Then I was really happy to have the, you know, I'd had this for a while. And then I was happy that I could use my glasses uh, more easily, but only in good light. And so, so I'm just trying to put this thing away and <laughs> it's not working very well. Uh, uh, anyway, um, yeah, it was limited to when the light was good. Otherwise, I couldn't. So I was kind of frustrated by that and went looking for another solution. And I found this, these um, Mighty Sight. I saw it on Amazon and then I saw that they had them at um, Canadian Tire, which is like a Canadian kind of a department store, I guess you'd call it. Um, they look like this. So they have, um, well, they look like this. <laughs> Uh, they are magnifying glasses and then they also have these LED lights and you charge them with they give you a little cable to charge it with lasts for three hours and um, it says they fit over prescription glasses so before I bought them I was looking at reviews and um, some people said they did not fit over their glasses. So I decided um, they had them at a, a Canadian Tire here in, in town. So I thought, well, worst case scenario, if they don't work, I can return them. So I bought them and um, I have quite a narrow face, quite small glasses. These fit fine over my prescription glasses. They also fit fine on my nose here with my uh, without glasses. So it really magnifies them a lot. If you need the light, you can turn the light on. And this nose pad is very comfortable. It's like a soft, rubbery plastic. They don't look nearly as ridiculous as that other thing, and they're way more comfortable. And what I find if I have my glasses on, I'll kind of perch them on my nose so that I can kind of look at the TV and then look at the thing and look at the TV if I want to look you know specifically at something so these have been a game changer again for my cross stitch now I'm not limited to good light either I can uh, just work on them in you know decent light but if I really need more light I can turn on the lights it's just it's been fantastic so um, my mom tried them out when I was up at the cabin and she really liked them. They, she could fit them on over her glasses and so she's going to order herself a pair. Um, but then my husband tried them on with his glasses and they, it, they're they too small. Um, and I would be, they are not very wide. Like I know I don't have a wide face. Whenever I go to get my prescription glasses, I always have, I'm limited into which frames I can choose because I do have a narrow face. Um, so I wasn't surprised because these are, like these fit, great width wise for me. So I can imagine that they would, for a lot of people, they probably don't fit over their glasses, but they do fit over mine. This is a game changer. So now I am no longer limited to when I can work on my cross stitch. And I know that that's a huge part of why I haven't done it in recent years very much because I really struggled to have some kind of setup where I could see both the pattern and the stitching well enough and that I could go between the two and not really struggle. Um, game changer, so happy. So if that's something you're, you know, you think you might need, it's got like an as seen on TV. I've never seen them on TV, but mighty sight. Uh, not sponsored, just a fan. 
All right, that is my very, very long episode for today. Um, uh, what time is it anyway? It's quarter to three, so I think I'm gonna start this editing and then I haven't decided yet if I'm gonna go grab a few groceries this afternoon or tomorrow. I'm gonna go to um, Costco with my sister in the morning. I might just pick up the rest of the groceries after that and then prep those meals for Cameron tomorrow afternoon. I think that's probably what's going to happen. So um, anyway, uh, thank you for watching as always. Um, I always forget to thank you for all of your comments and um, participation in the make along, private messages, all those things. I always appreciate hearing from you and having that interaction with you. So thank you for that. Um, if you're interested, stick around for a few more minutes. I'll put a little montage of um, wildlife viewing. Oh, there's also a clip of some uh, turkey vultures flying overhead. When we did the trail the first night in Princeton, um, just as we were going to turn back and, and go, there was, I think at one time, about, I think we counted about 30 of them in the air above us just soaring. By the time I got the footage, there were just a few that I could capture. But I know I talked about them a month or two ago and um, now you can see what they look like at least when they're flying. Um, anyway, that is it. So thanks for watching. I'm hoping to record again. Now it may not be this coming week because I probably won't have a time to show you. So more than likely to be the following week. Uh, so take care until then and uh, enjoy your crafting. See you soon. Bye.